Hello everyone and it's day six of my experience here in Bengaluru and I'm delighted to welcome you to Reshma's kitchen and she's going to teach us a very straightforward Malayalam dish which is called Putu. Putu. Over to you Reshma. Um, okay so here are all the things for the Putu. This is a Putu maker and if you look at it I've put some water in. So basically, puttu is a steamed um, food. Okay. And uh, this is a traditional puttu maker. This is how it looks. So basically, you put water in there and then you steam it up. Okay. And this you will find in every Kerala household standard. And now, this is, um, I don't know what you call it, but this also goes in. Oh, okay. okay. We put it and we drop it in. Yeah. So that forms the base. Ah, that forms the that base. That forms the base. And then the puttu goes in. And so you would get something that's like a cylindrical shape. Yes. Okay. So now we will make the puttu mix. So basically, we start with the puttu powder. It's rice flour. Rice flour, yes. everyone. Go get rice it's flour. Rice this is what flour. you need. And you put in a little bit of rice flour. Okay. And then what we do is sometimes you can put sugar. Some people will put salt. I'm a salt person. So we will add a spoon of salt to this dry rice flour. Okay, do you see? And just mix, mix yes. it all dry. Now what you can also do is add a little bit of coconut, grated coconut. Grated coconut is a staple in every Kerala household. Ah, right. This is a staple, this is a must. So in England we call that desiccated, I think. Ah, yes, desiccated. And this is um, part and parcel of every Malu household. We say Malu for Malayali. Ah. And then we can put a little bit of this also. And Malayalam is a language of the state called of Kerala. Kerala. Yes. And you mix it all up. Now, you have to make it a little wet, basically, with some water. Can you see? Get some water. Now you gotta make it. There is a particular consistency that we need, and it's not too runny. So I will change over to this. So it's starting to form little clumps, isn't yeah. it? But yes. we don't want it too clumpy either. Ah. This is basically a breakfast in many households. A traditional breakfast, breakfast yeah. Yeah. in Kerala. We usually have it with um, uh, chickpea, that's the uh, brown one. The brown chickpea, yeah, right. As a curry or banana, but since I've not made the curry, we're just going to do it with, you yes. have it with banana, a small banana. So basically what you have to do is, you've got to test it out. You take a little bit in your hand, okay, yeah, maybe we can do a little more water. Do you see this? So it's starting to come together like in yeah, a Yeah, but it should piece. come together a little more, and but when you touch it, it should like, you know, powder up. Yes. A little more water. Keep mixing, mixing. Many people drop a lot of sugar in this, so it becomes very sweet. Okay. Well, I'm personally very glad that you don't. <laughs> and we put white sugar. Yes. Because white goes with the white. Of course, the white of the rice. Exactly. Flour and the right of the um, coconut desiccated. Yeah. Mm. 
Oops. So the big girl, okay. Yeah. You see? So now it's forming a shape, yeah. yes. So now we're good here. Okay. So now what we do is, well, this, this is done. What we do here is we will drop this into this. Yes. Okay. But what I also like to do is I like to layer it. So we already have a bit of coconut in there. So you put like maybe two spoons. Okay. And then you put a little bit of coconut. All right. And then again, you can put maybe another one, two, three. And then you layer it again. We call this pitu in uh, Sri Lanka. Pitu. Yeah, it's called pitu in Sri Lanka. I mean, I didn't realize it was the same thing till I went to Sri Lanka and saw putu. Yeah. And it was called pitu. And it again. And you see it's filling up. Yeah, it's quite easy. I thought it was going to be really quite a job to get it in there, but it's actually quite straightforward. Yeah, it's very straightforward. You just need to have the right size of spoon to fit into the chamber. to now take this over yes to the stove okay and we will and we will put it here on top so the whole science is water steams starts boiling the steam goes up cooks this comes up yes Now we got to wait for about four minutes, five minutes actually, and we have to wait. We have to wait to see the steam coming out from here. Okay. We got a little hole on top. The minute ah, the steam yes. comes out, yeah. It does look really fascinating. In fact, it looks like scientific equipment. <laughs> 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 yeah, it looks like straight out of. The science lab, yeah. It does. But what's cooking is putu. <laughs> yes. But this is, we have so many, I mean, this is, there are two types. So we do putu in this. Yes. Or we do putu like a little bowl and we put it on top of the pressure cooker. Right, okay, yes, but yes. This gives you like a nice long, and that's technically a putu supposed to be long. That's the traditional Kerala way. Yes. Of doing it. And once it's done, we will move over to this and we will start eating it with a banana. Right. So you have so many bananas, different types which I've never seen before. Yes. We have uh, the ones that go with this are the small ones. Oh, the small ones? Yeah, we have a small banana in there. Right, okay. Now we gotta wait. Yes. So this is an opportunity to ask you one or two questions. So I remember when we started talking about setting up, you explained to me there's a particular way that we would approach the kitchen traditionally about being clean. Can you yes, tell us yes, a little yes. bit about this, please? So, well, at least that's what my mom used to tell me when I was growing up, was yeah. you 
go to the kitchen only after taking a shower. As soon as you wake up, you do your business, take your shower, and then enter the kitchen super clean, super hygienic. And that's when you start cooking. Yes. Not otherwise. And all, all about respect, I imagine. Yes, and then also, um, I think we approach everything in a very, especially food and kitchen, uh, it's kind of sacred, I think. I ah, think that's it's a sacred, it's very yes. sacred. I think that's, that's the approach, you know, looking at food as something that's very sacred. Yes. Um, and, you know, hygiene. Um, just like you go to a temple, you cannot enter a temple without taking a shower. That's the first rule of a temple is you do not go to the temple without taking a bath. Right. You have to take a shower and then only you enter the temple. And that's sort of ingrained in every Hindu household. Yes. Right, especially in the South. Yes. Yeah. It's unthinkable if you walk into a temple without a bath. Um, so just like that we approach. So I think it's also got to do with the elements because we worship fire as well. Ah, oh, you worship the spirit of the fire. Yes. Oh, that's so great. So, you know, when we have one of our pujas or our, you know, sacred, our rituals of fire is, you know, uh, holy. Yes. Um, so you would not be so keen on cooking with electricity, you'd like to have a flame. Yeah. Good. I mean, modern, I think now in the cities, people do use their inductions and stuff. Yes. But um, fire is something else. But traditionally, it's always fire. Yes. Yeah. So I think many of our ancient, you know, our old practices are quite, um, I mean, you know, from a hygienic point of view as well. And also, I think when we, you know, take a shower, we're completely like, it's a cleanse, isn't it? Water yes. is a cleanse. It's a cleanse, so And true. then you wake up and you kind of take a bath, you feel fresh, you feel good, you feel clean, you know, you don't have any destructive thoughts first thing in the morning. Yes. Um, or at least, you know, you're out with the old and then you come into the kitchen with a new approach to food your approach to cooking and then you put all that energy when you're cooking so whatever's inside goes into the food so I yes. think it's always nicer when you're clean I think that's the whole uh, that's what I think I mean that's what I uh, also think is involved it's a revelation to me and I can see myself taking this on quite automatically when I return back to UK because <laughs> It's grounded in such common sense and practicality, yeah. as well as a spiritual component. It's yeah. good to hear. Because we're like getting out of our old clothes, you know, whatever yes. we've ruminated in last night. Yes. And then we get up, we kind of shed everything, and then we start our day uh, with a completely new um, state. With freshness, and even, I dare say, with innocence, perhaps. Exactly. Yes. So the whole point about Vedic cuisine as I understand it is it's got so much of a spiritual component and also it's very medicinal this is how people heal by eating in the right way with the right things yes 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 uh, Indian kitchens we we have everything medicinal in the kitchen I mean we don't have to go anywhere we don't have to go to a pharmacy it's all there in the kitchen the garlic the ginger the chili the cumin the turmeric, super anti-inflammatory. This is there. This is like part of every household. It's a yes. ghee. This is ghee. You have ghee here. Yes. You have coconut oil. Your turmeric, salt, and pepper. I mean, that's your. That's yours. That's your. That's yeah. your foundation. That's the foundation, and that's there. Like that's what stays outside. Okay. okay so I think we're getting some boiling. And everything else goes inside, but these guys are always out. Right. Oh, see, now you see the steam? Can you see the steam? So it's starting to come out, that's it.
So now we can turn it off. So you've turned the the flame off completely. Yes. Right. Now we can go back here. that was amazing it was much quicker than I thought maybe five minutes at the most it's been steamed and then when the steam is really coming up the gas has gone off yes. yeah much faster than I thought and with an oven glove the uh, top part is being removed there it is Oops, sorry. so in India this kind of dish is very common but it's very rare in England it's a special dish to contain the heat so it's an insulating dish that we have here or to contain the heat yeah and now what we will do is so note the oven glove very important very very important you might want to take this so it and you just we just pop it out. Oh, you press that little, um, <coughs> yeah, got the it. Base. Press the base. And the cylinder pops out yeah. as the first bit. Just a second. There, look yeah, at that. So it's there. now the cylinder is empty. It's all in the bowl. We should have got a perfect cylinder, but it didn't come out perfectly, but there you go. Do you see? If I push it out properly, it would have come out like longer. That's, a bit folks. that's what it looks like. Yeah, okay. So that's the putter at this stage. And now we will mix it up. It's ready to serve. Now, where do we go? To the. Uh I'll just follow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry guys, it's a mushed putu right now. Okay, now you have to come back with me to get the banana. Ah, oh, right, that's also a really important point. We'll be learning as we go with all this, everybody. Time goes on. <laughs> this will be much more straightforward. But right now, this is what we're doing. And we have different types of bananas here. So this is what you are going to be eating. That's what we are. So we're after the small bananas, small ideally. Banana. Okay, and we're back. Okay. And we'll take a plate. Or a, are you going to eat it in a bowl? Yes, please. All right, we have some bowls. And we will... All right. And there's Orbit, who is also rotating. Orbit, come here, come out, come out. Orbit. Right, there we are, the bananas. Sit, 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 sit. Orbit, out of fight. Oh. So we've got a little dog medicine coming to the picture here as well. <laughs> just to give us a okay, little so extra now, challenge. Uh, you will have to sit and eat. And now it's time for me to sit which for me is an incredibly exciting moment because this is where it all comes together in my personal experience. Oh, 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 oh. say something at this point because for an English person this is a bit disconcerting because 
That's right. There is no cutlery and that is deliberate. We are not having cutlery with this meal. So what a good thing my hands have been washed and I'm all ready for this. So you have to take... So I literally take it with my hands. Yes. And it, it's, qu it's quite warm. You have to take with your right hand. Ah, sorry. With my right hand. Even though I'm left-handed, I'm going to use my right hand because that's a tradition. That's a tradition. Okay, and now we will take a banana. Take a banana. That one seems to want to come off more easily. Right, what do I do? Open it up. Yeah. Mush it up inside, yeah. So just and you will mush, mush everything together. <laughs> and I'm going to mush everything together. Okay, yes. so this is really quite something because feel the, the texture. The English indoctrination is like, but is this really okay? But actually, it is. It is okay. This is what we do. So feeling the textures, I can feel the heat. Of and the you know, one of the reasons that we eat with our hands is also because it aids in digestion. It aids in digestion? Yes. How come I don't understand? So what happens is when we touch our food, Yeah. Huh? we touch our food, right? Yeah. So when we touch it, we're already like creating a lot of like, um, what do you say? Not just anticipation, but it starts prepping our stomach it's so way before right. you actually start eating it. So my gut is actually being synchronized exactly. into the digestive process because my connection with the hands and also the hands contain the human microbiome so I'm adding the microbiome to uh, now it's starting to come together it is I'm starting to feel it and it's starting to feel like a really pleasurable experience yes. as the two main components come together yes. it's starting to feel good okay now you can now start making balls so now I start to make balls yes. okay it's good so take some there and then make it into a bowl. And when I've done that, I put it into the bowl, the other bowl. It's my very first attempt to put a bowl. I want to do the same thing again. Well, this is definitely part of the initiation process. Doing something I've never done before. Seeing something prepared that I've never seen prepared before. And having this sense of continuity and oneness, so I'm actually engaged in something which is a traditional practice in the state of Kerala, where they speak the language Malayalam. And the interesting thing about Malayalam, it's a palindrome. So if you write it backwards, it looks exactly the same. Malayalam. So I rather like that. So my balls are, are coming out a rather different size, a bit of inconsistent because I've never done this before. And so this is Bengaluru, this is India. And this means that things happen. So although we are in the process of making the film, something happens, the doorbell rings, and something needs to be done. And that's all part of life. So part of life here is to expect the unexpected. And I reckon that last little bit didn't get smooshed quite as well as the rest because I think there's not quite so much banana in that bit, but I'm going to do my best. And there it is, that will do. Yes. Now it's really hard to restrain myself from just putting my hands into my mouth at this point, but I'm going to restrain myself. So I've made my ball, this is my very first attempt. There they are. Wow. So what well happens done. next? Next you eat them. Now I eat them. So this is it, this is my moment. I want those to be off my face before I start. So this is it, I'll pick up the ball. It's so comforting. It's a gentle start to the day. There's nothing extreme here. There's a sweetness, but there's 
behind the sweetness is a whole load of other flavours which I don't have the words for actually. And I feel complete. I feel like a circle has been joined together. A sense of completeness eating my ass. And the textures, there's all the textures going on. There's a smoothness, but there's a crunchiness provided by the desiccated coconut. Oh. I'm so grateful. This is the first food of the day. I've not eaten anything up until now. So pleased. Mmm. Oh, that feels so good. That was the first bowl. <laughs> Well, this is an amazing experience. So I'm going to ask a technical question. Is it okay if I lick these fragments off? Oh yeah, that's also part of the... It's part of yeah, the process. Go, like, you have to just lick, you know? Yeah, there you go. Basically, mm. we just use one hand. So it's one hand for this. The whole thing would be done one-handed if you yeah. were knew what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike me. I shall remember that next time. <laughs> because Making when you have a gravy, you will need one hand. To oh. Sort of like okay to mix it all in yeah, yeah. right so this is banana so now we're actually mixing with uh, solid yes so with uh, the other way of eating it is with gravy right right so you but this is the this is the best way to start because you have the experience on its own yeah. without anything else yeah. thank you so much for this rather extraordinary experience now because of the condition of my hands i will require you to press a red button but before you do Thank you very much, Reshma, and all the love to you, and all the love to all the viewers. And please do comment and let us know what you think about this experience. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.